now for our weekly news segment. Yeah, so we got this we got this tweet here. Breaking Biden's 2025 budget is very bullish on Bitcoin. Move the mic up there. There we go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, the White House expects 250k by 2035. They're counting on it for their tax revenues. Yes, and of course we have like a community note here talking about that they're the White House budget doesn't actually contain Bitcoin price projections, but they're uh, they're expecting to have a lot of revenue based on taxes and and the regulation that they're going to be putting on crypto, which in turn I guess makes it bullish because I, they they know that people are going to be using this, right? Well, it's it's not it's just, it shows, in my opinion, me being the Monero Maxi, I am that they're the government is fully embracing Bitcoin because it's a perfectly taxable asset. Yep. And they're excited that it's going up in price because they're yeah. gonna get their pound of flesh, more so, uh, more uh, money out of thin air, right? Yep, they'll get they'll get their capital gains. Uh, maybe eventually they'll get their unrealized capital gains. I, oh I, boy, I've always been throwing that uh, out there. Yep, I, I don't yep. think it's that far fetched. I, so. I can see that happening. I can see that happening. Because uh, I mean, these things by themselves shouldn't even have capital gains. They're they're, they're currencies. Yeah, I was having a discussion with some of the. Bitcoin. I think they're samurai guys. Yesterday, they, they it was over the the meme of I lost my, you know, Monero in a boating accident, accident. Mm-hmm. and uh, they they don't really uh, I don't know they don't really like that that concept or that idea. They think it's kind of they think it's kind of BS. But for me, it kind of makes sense. Um, the fact that you can't see how Monero has moved on chain adds security. Uh, and adds plausible deniability. I'm not saying don't pay your taxes, guys, because nobody wants to end up in jail or or to have to pay some crazy fines. And the U.S. government mm-hmm. has a lot of yep. resources. Yep. But there uh, there there are advantages to having a tool that allows you to completely control your own money and in a way where nobody can see how you use it or if you even still have it. So I'll leave it at that. All right. Uh, moving on. Next, we have we got this tweet from the Xano Project. They are launching their Zarganium hard fork, uh, which is now just well, I guess zero does away. I guess it's already it's already been done by now. It's already been done. Uh, we are glad to inform our community that Xano D slash V C slag, the tech that allows us to have assets on top of Xano, has recently been successfully audited by CypherStack, who is the company that developed Stack Wallet. An applied cryptography consultancy, and yeah, they do they do audits and they do some other stuff. The audit passed, and no critical issues that require any action have been found. You can find the results of this audit together with the Zarkanium code audit, which has already been done in 2021 here. CypherStack made a post about this audit on the Monero forum as well. Having received the positive results of this audit is the icing on the cake as we count down to the Zarkanium hard fork, which has happened now. Yeah, uh, why did they... I, did you read the post at all I'm on the so it's uh, uh, okay because so in in the midst of doing this audit there were i guess essentially auditing cl sag in general right yep, yep. so it was uh it was a bonus for monero monero benefiting from the research and development of uh zarcanium um and benefiting from the efforts that they're putting in by having further essentially uh audits going into an element of Monero. So that's nice to see. Uh, other projects that in the ecosystem, their their kind of their research and development budget going towards helping Monero. So it's nice yep. to see that. That's that is fine. super cool to see. Yeah. Um, and then next we got, got this tweet from Monero Mateo. Many Bitcoin miners will lobby for this. It's a barrier of entry for competitors. They will also bring EPA regulations. TX fees will become more expensive as a result. They already are expensive, which encourages encourages third-party custody. Who will also support this? Simple profit incentives, no CBDC necessary. Uh, and another tweet from this guy, Pierre Richard. Biden administration pro- is proposing a 30% tax on electricity used by Bitcoin miners, even if you are off-grid using your own solar and wind generation. All of the reasons they provide are pretextual. The real reason is that they want to suppress Bitcoin and launch a CBDC. Uh, yeah, so just, you know, another example of the attack surface that that Bitcoin has, this time not regarding its its transparency, but the ability to see who all the miners are, uh, which are just large companies at this point that are approachable, and the government will be 
creating more and more regulations and perhaps taxes that affect them. And you could expect that they these corporations will be bending the knee because they want to exist as corporations. And in fact, perhaps potentially they benefit while they don't want to be paying these taxes. Uh, for them, they might see it as a barrier to entry for other companies to get involved in Bitcoin mining. So they might actually, in, in a way, uh, benefit and welcome these these taxes on electricity for those purposes. So uh, in, in my mind, it's just kind of another example of the attack surfaces that Bitcoin has. And here it's the example of where the, mine, the mining network and system can be essentially regulated and even taxed by the U.S. government. It doesn't help that people have to use these ten thousand dollar super power hungry ASICs just to mine Bitcoin. But like tax on electricity is already like that's pretty that's pretty crazy just because you're Bitcoin mining. But oh, then it's completely absurd. It's, it's absurd. And then they go further and off grid. Right. So you're not even using like the existing infrastructure right. that's been partially subsidized. You're using your own solar or whatever. Right. Which, and they want to tax that. Why do they want to punish the use of your own yeah. energies? Yeah. Um, especially, you know, Bitcoin has a tendency to to try to seek out the cheapest energy possible. And lots of times it's energy that's being created in places where it can't be used for other things. So, yeah, the, the whole premise doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But Monero, just another example of a problem that Monero won't have, right? Uh, they, If there ever was uh, an implementation of tax, tax on electricity for mining, well, I guess you just can't use a computer, that's huh? That's absurd as charging tax and everybody that's using a computer yeah. in their home. Yeah, I mean, there's like tons of ways that people like, even with Bitcoin mining, like there's tons of ways that the cost of that gets heavily subsidized by, we're using this to heat homes, uh, especially people living in the cold, or we're using this to like, uh, like we're using like certain uh, ways to cool it down that would normally um, cost more. But uh, yeah, this is just, this is just like, going really 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 far with uh with just like control over uh over this and just, it's, just, it's very specific to this we'll, we'll be seeing more and more of it uh right, so next, next we got this video from let's see if i can go back to the beginning here michael saylor uh, sal the Agris posted i've been saying that for eight years but these finance bros have poisoned the well of crypto yeah and that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding about Bitcoin. People people refer to it as currency or digital currency, and that's unfortunate uh, historical artifact. That's unfortunate uh, historical artifact. Does it ever have to be a currency, or do you think it ever becomes a quote unquote currency? I, it doesn't have to be a currency. That's unfortunate. A uh, historical artifact, and that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding about Bitcoin. People people refer to it as currency or digital currency, and that's unfortunate. All right, we, we keep playing it on loop. It's a little hard to hear, but yeah, it's hard for us to hear. It. Michael Seller is saying, "Did you catch a, it?" <laughs> it's an unfortunate historical artifact to be calling a Bitcoin a a currency. He doesn't see it having that that, that use case. Um, I so I don't know I don't even know what to say here. He's completely lost the plot. <laughs> I mean, like uh, from the beginning, this and guy the, was obviously like a grifter. He was just trying to use it right. for money. So and... so Monero, Monero. I mean Monero. Big Bitcoin is digital in the eyes of Michael Seller. Bitcoin is digital property. It's the digital version of Manhattan. You can own a piece of the property. It's not meant to be currency. It's not meant to be peer to peer digital cash. It's just a store of value. It's digital energy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which uh yeah, that you know that just blows my mind but uh this this is you know this is the this is the the main this is the main spokesman essentially for for bitcoin at this point yeah and it's just yeah. unfortunate to see the direction that he's leading the the technology there but that's where monero comes in right guys uh so everything for everything that he's saying it's unfortunate it's an unfortunate historical artifact well that's exactly what monero is and wants to be and will continue to be all right, next we got this post from at BTC Gandalf. You check the on-chain flows and realize that the Bitcoin spot ETF providers now hold 95% of the Bitcoin supply. It's all held by just three custodians. BTC is now just numbers moving around in an Oracle database. Gary Gensler was right. On-chain analysis is dead. Just another uh, <laughs> example, right? Uh, so it's 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 
essentially been completely co-opted at this point, uh, theatized in a way. People aren't even holding their Bitcoin. They're just trading an ETF that represents Bitcoin. Uh, it's similar to, you know, like, like, a, like, like a gold ETF, right? It's, it's just numbers on a screen at that point. Uh, they hold, they hold these, these powers that be, right, essentially hold all the Bitcoin will, or will eventually hold a large, vast majority of the Bitcoin and people will just own a promise to that Bitcoin. I think the ETF has been cut on the nails in the coffin. Like, as you're saying, like, they're just able to totally control the money supply of Bitcoin at this point. Um, by... Yeah, that's an, that's an astounding That's fact. crazy. Yeah, if, if it's, if that's... Really the Bitcoin spot provides providers now hold 90. Is that true? I mean, that's true. That seems a little bit, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of money in the ETFs already. Yeah. I, I don't know. That might, there's a whole, that there's a whole be, thread here. Might it might not be, be completely to, true. But that, if, um, if so, I mean, we, we, it's it's kind of it's it ceased to exist. As there is a whole to thread here that you can, guys can take a look at and uh, go through and see see what he's he's all saying. Of course, we don't have time to read through all of it here. Um, but I think the ETF is already. I mean, like this, the points are still valid. Yeah. Regardless of how much money control it has right now, the points yeah. of why you wouldn't want an ETF is still valid crazy and here's a tweet from you oh here's a tweet from me what was that oh this is uh with regards to the roman uh oh yep sterling gov case he's been unfortunately been found guilty uh they but the good news is they will be appealing the decision those guys were here at the conference giving uh essentially an update on what went down explaining everything to everybody um I'm going to try to maybe grab them today at some point to do a quick little Monero talk. But what what we're learning is what we already know, that when you use Bitcoin, you're taking a, a very large risk in that you're the, where the big, you, you can be accused of a crime if that Bitcoin was ever implicated in any crime, even if you didn't even if you weren't the one who committed that crime necessarily. Yeah. Uh, when you use Bitcoin, it comes with the, the trail of past transactions. And uh, if those past transactions were related to any criminal activity, uh, you may be the one that catches the blame for that. Um, and this is, this is just, you know, yet again, we, we talk about it all the time. Well, the really uh, scary thing about this case is that it wasn't even like definitive of them, like, of their, their their ability to trace Bitcoin in this case to prove that it was Roman Sterling Gov. They're just using the idea that Bitcoin's traceable to try and uh, kind of make up this this idea based on not enough corroborating it as evidence. It, it, it's very clear that it's not enough um, from from Tor talking yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't really enough evidence, uh, but they're giving him a guilty verdict anyway. And what this looks like, they're they may be trying to use one of this as like a really big case to set an example mm -hmm. that can be used for future cases down the road. Exactly. It's a lot of like judge doesn't understand how any of this stuff works. A lot of the jury, most jury probably has no idea either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, which they is, didn't have any hard evidence. You know, they didn't have uh, his computer with evidence that 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 showed that he was the one running the Bitcoin Fog network. They didn't have any of that. All they nope. had was a trail. Like a shared, IP, a like a VPN IP address, right? Right, right. That's like yeah. shared. Well, they had, they had a trail of, of, of past Bitcoin transactions that coincided with the purchase of the Bitcoin Fog domain. Right? Yep, yep. Uh, which didn't necessarily mean that he was the one who purchased the domain, but that he held Bitcoin at some point that was involved in the purchase. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that, that's really what yep. they hung him on. Yep. And so, like I'm, like I was saying before, I mean, what that really means is, anytime you know, you, you, you could be, you could be that sucker that's using Bitcoin that was previously used in a crime, and if if the government's look, looking for a fall guy, um, and you happen to be the one that your KYC, they'll they might just be like, oh, that guy, right. that guy. So it's a it's a it's a loss for. Uh, Roman and it's a win for chain analysis and the ability of government to use chain analysis to well I think it's really it's mainly just a win because like cipher trace they had an expert opinion like they had an expert opinion um that was not allowed to be presented uh because it was it was 
they were acting, even them, even Cypher Trace, they were showing how it wasn't enough evidence to prove that it was Roman Simlingov that actually had that Bitcoin, actually made that purchase. Um, Cypher but, Trace, yeah, another, Cypher another Tra chain analysis yeah. company uh, was criticized. Yeah, they were criticizing. Chain, ana chain analysis, the company, uh, for their, their means and methods. Um, and I'm not really clear on the details of what happened there, but basically they were. It sounds like to... just a few days before they there's something happened and suddenly they weren't allowed to have their their witness come and give their expert opinion, which is something something behind closed doors kind of thing, right? right? Like which pressure, is crazy. pressure was on yeah. them for whatever yep. reason, yep. Uh, who, you know, because they all get funded you, by the government, right? Yeah. So which is, which is another big issue. All these guys that 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 you know work for chain. It's kind of a revolving door between working for the government on the side of prosecuting and then going to work for something like one of these chain analysis companies as their in-house attorney or whatever it may be. All right, thank you, Paddy. It was an expert testimony. I was saying opinion. Right. Uh, yeah, the, it, that's what I heard from... Uh, yeah, you're saying that for real they suppress the cyber trace testimony? Yeah, that's what it sounded like based on what Tor was saying yesterday. Um, I think that speech will probably be up online because I... There's no reason that they would live stream it and not upload them later. No, yeah, I think it'll be up. And I'll, I'll try to grab tour today and maybe do like a quick little 20 minute Monero talk just to get the bottom of everything that's going on. But, but the but the, the 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 real lesson here is that the government is misusing chain analysis uh, or is showing that they have the ability to misuse chain. You know, whether or not this guy is ultimately guilty, it's showing in, in a court of law. Uh, chain analysis will be used against you. Even though the chain analysis itself is flawed, but then the way in which this case was done was like just so, so bad. So bad. Because um, chain analysis already, like, yeah, Bitcoin is somewhat traceable, but chain analysis is still like on Bitcoin is like not always definitive. Like there's those black box, you know, magic that's going on between chain analysis and cypher trace. It's like, so I've got these what, what, what is kind of the lesson there, guys? I think we all know it already. Use <laughs> Shum should have, should have used Monero. <laughs> should have used, used Monero. Uh, and, and the... Uh, well, unfortunately, when he had... That, that was back in, what, like 2013, though? That was before Monero. Sure, sure. So we can give him a pass. Yeah. But nowadays, Monero really should just be... Uh, Everyone and, should speak. And what was the, the name of the firm uh, the, that's owned by Visa that was had this expert testimony? It's a um, the Cipher Trace. Cipher Trace. And so the other thing that came out of this is I believe. Oh yeah, Cipher Trace. They're closing doors, right? Closed. I wonder if we down. have one of those. Uh, uh, we have one of those tweets. Days after all this happened, so it's it's all very. There sus. it is. I'll move to this one real quick. Okay. Cipher Trace issues report critical of Fed's use of chain analysis and US v. Sterling Gov. We just talked about that. Then MasterCard suddenly pulls it and shuts the whole tracing firm down. Not a coincidence. Don't dare question US attorneys or there is career retribution. Wow. Um, yeah, that, that, that's power, guys. That's that's that's, that's either that was the case or it was just because they weren't making enough money. But Scoop, the MasterCard owned Cipher Trace informed clients that it is shutting down key blockchain analytics products. This comes just a month after MasterCard pulled an expert report from a Cypher Trace director in the Bitcoin fog case due to data issues. Wow, this is from Fortune.com. Mm -hmm. um, so this is pretty. This is getting, it's getting pretty out there. And for those not familiar with Cypher Trace, they are the firm that claimed to be able to essentially trace Monero transactions. But um, so far, we we haven't seen that. Yeah, probably we seen that. Uh, and they claim to have a tool that they were using. For, uh, for purposes of, of quote unquote tracing Monero or gaining insight into Monero. Oh, they're blocking me from looking at this article. Um, oh, well. That was never proved to be the case. There's a, a famous interview of uh, Justin Ernhofer grilling, right? I don't know if, you're, if you've ever seen that, Tux, where uh, Justin interviews somebody from Cypher Trace. I don't think I've seen that, no. He gains in insight into what they were suggesting the tool was that they had. and. From that interview, what was gathered was that it's like pretty much a black box, didn't right? Have much of anything. Uh, they, you know, they were just making probable. Uh, I see. No, Which no, is the most you can do with Monero. Yep. As far as I know, the IRS bounty has never been claimed. Uh, being able to deterministically trace Monero for like six hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm sure now they would offer millions of dollars for that, but so far, no bites. All right, so last we've got we've got video also after this. 
uh, MicroStrategy announced for the second time in less than two weeks that it will sell convertible notes to buy more Bitcoin. At the top, Michael Saylor, who says Bitcoin is not meant to be a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system, is doubling down or uh, tripling down at this point. I don't even know. He's buying more Bitcoin. He's buying more digital property. So if you, if you want to be a part of uh, Michael Saylor land and own a, own a piece of his, his, digital, his digital property, you can buy some Bitcoin and hope that he never sells it. Bitcoin's going to go to $3 billion. <laughs> it's already at what? The market cap's already at like over $1.5 trillion, right? right. It's like how, how much higher can it possibly go? Yeah. All right. All right. I, I guess I caught this video earlier. So here's Peter Schiff debating uh, with regards to Bitcoin. And uh, I thought this is a pretty good. How many minutes to play? Uh, I'm not sure if you start here. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. That adoption, it hasn't, it hasn't uh, become any more of a currency than it was when it was first created. That's a very fair thing. It hasn't because the problem is it keeps going up. So you're disincentivized to sell it or it's very volatile, right? It's not very good as a currency. Well, it's not very good at the main thing it was designed for. <laughs> but and, and I remember when I first heard about it, when I first heard about Bitcoin, the way it was put to me, Circumvent all the AML requirements. You don't have to get out of the banking system. You can transact anonymously, private. You don't have to worry about the government spying on you. You can be out of the banking system. I got into it for an entirely different reason, which is, as Dan Tapiero would call it, it's the security truth machine. It's the value of the ledger. So, Peter Schiff being more, much more in the know than, than Mike Chris Saylor saying, I thought the original reason and use case for Bitcoin was the ability essentially to transact peer to peer anonymously and privately. And he's saying it's not even good at, for those purposes. It doesn't serve utility for those purposes. And this is where I've kind of always agreed with Peter Schiff that he actually understands what Bitcoin was supposed to be. And that's why he's kind of in awe of the fact that it's, you know, uh, gain this much value when it doesn't really provide the base utility that it was meant to provide it's become just a purely speculative it's purely speculative yeah without a base utility under underneath it and he while he he may be shunned from from most in crypto he appears to understand it better than my yeah. seller yep or I, I i think i think uh i think seller understands that he's just yeah, taking he's, advantage. He's selling, yeah, yeah selling, he's selling, selling stuff. Digital property. Yep. And he wants you to buy yep. these. Most of these people, they, they all know. They know how all this works. Yeah. They're just making money off of it because they can. But my, my, I, I often wonder what Peter Schiff would say about Monero, right? Because yeah, because I mean, it kind of fulfills. Yeah. Like, well, actually, there is something that does do that, and it's called Monero. Do you think that has any value in 